we have uh, Charlotte Evans. I don't know if you all know who Charlotte is, but she was in the Paralympic Games last year and she did rather well. Uh, she won a gold medal uh, with her ski partner, Kelly Gallagher. <laughs> and standing next to Charlotte, we've got Rachel Murphy, who um, is also a rather good sports um, team, uh, lady who. Um, <laughs> she is <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I knew I was gonna ask oh, I don't know really, haven't I? Um, so she was part of the World Cup winning team uh, last year. Um, it's the first time you won the World Cup for 20 years. So a round of applause for her. <laughs> and they are currently holding their, their rather shiny medals. And I'm sure at the end of all this, if you want to come along for a bit of a, a bit of a picture with the girls on the medals, I'm sure that's live. Yeah, of course. So what I would like to do is just open it up, and I, and I kind of want you guys to, to ask some, ask these guys some questions about what it's like to be an elite athlete. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of start the ball rolling, and, and if you guys want to can just pop your hands up and shout out your questions, and these guys can answer them. So. From, from my point of view, I'm a sports scientist, and I, I'd like to kind of know if, if you've got any kind of stories or of, of how sports science and sports medicine has kind of helped you along the way to kind of get to the top. Um, I think you don't really understand actually how much sports science has is there for you until you sort of go through an injury or you need some help in certain aspects. Um, but for me, I probably didn't really recognise it until later in my career where I needed to. I was at, performing at a certain level, but then I needed to go sort of, I wanted to take the next step and develop a little bit more. And it's when you get to a certain level in sport, it's all about little one percenters and extras to just to take you on that little bit step more. And, and sometimes it is only little things, but they all add up and you know, and then it helps you win gold medals. Um, but a lot of sports science has helped me in terms of nutrition, making sure that I'm eating at the right times. When I, because I play sevens um, as well as the game of 15s, we have really short turnarounds in games and I need to make sure that I'm getting the right stuff in, but I don't want to be taking too much. It's about, you know, small detail, but finding at the right time to be able to be able to help my performance when I step on a pitch every time I step on a pitch. So that's probably one of the biggest examples would be nutrition and what I'm taking, whether it's a sports drink, whether it's a supplement, um, or whether it's you know medicine that's going to help anything that I've got an injury with or anything like that. So there's sort of some examples for me. Yeah, I think. Sorry, can you hear me or not? Yeah. Sorry. This is a bit <laughs> um, For me, obviously, I we have a team that helps you cycle, like whether it's in your cycle, your head, or stuff like that, or it's to do with what your body is feeling. For me, at the moment. I've just suffered a massive concussion and I think it's a prime time to realise how much sports science then comes into play and it's it's a really, I'm not going to get into concussion, don't worry, but like, it's a big thing in sport and rugby would be your prime, prime example, but in skiing it's not been looked at well enough, it's not been judged, it's not got good protocols, it hasn't got that, that build up, so I think that's when you come back to sports science and you speak to people who actually know what they're doing and you relate it back to other sports to get the help that you need. So, it will be you guys that I would be coming to to get that advice of what, what's best to get back into sport as quick as possible, but also to still stay recovered, whether it's nutrition or whether it's just physio. So, yeah, it's massively important and it's nice to see everyone so interested. Excellent. Um, I, 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 we've got one more question, and then as you guys are thinking of the question, we've all opened up. Um, and I'll, I'll ask Charlotte this one first. It's, it's more kind of about teamwork. And, Obviously, you are um, Kelly Guy, and so I just want to talk about kind of how you form that kind of team, that team bond, and then I kind of open it out to, to Rachel, who's obviously going to talk about mobility and kind of how the team kind of um, social network kind of works and kind of make, kind of maximising that form from your team. So. Yes, yeah, so the teamwork for us is massive. It's I've got a girl that has to rely on me for her safety for me to get her down as fast as possible. We're moving 70, 70 miles an hour. 70, 75 miles per hour, so it takes a lot of trust, but that isn't built on the slope, that's built off the slope, and it's making sure that you have that relationship and and that communication that is going to work together. It's it's quite a, I say a set skill, but it's anybody can do it if they wanted to do it, but it's, you have to form a bond with that person. I don't know, obviously a bigger team sounds way more intense, my team is enough for me, but um, it's, 
it's yeah, it's making sure you've got that bond together and you've got that relationship to get the best result you possibly can. But you have to make sure that you're both thinking the same. So if I'm having a good day and she's not, we're not going to work. So it has to make sure that we're both on the same page and we're both on the same goal for it to, to work. Um, I think obviously with a big team, everybody's involved in team sports. There's a lot of personalities and you have a lot of big personalities in that group. And we use um, a lot of sports sites as a um, just saying and um, with that we look into insights and look at profiling people and find out what their strengths are what their weaknesses are how to communicate with people and, and so you have to go a little bit deeper it's not just about turning up you've got to have that trust that honesty that hard work and ethic that everybody's got and it's um so we do a thing called insights don't know does everybody know what that is Brilliant. I'm glad I that <laughs> Basically, it puts you into sort of categories of what sort of people you are and how you are. So there's four different colours. There's a yellow, a red, a blue, and a green. And how we sort of put them into order is reds, they're really fiery, really like, can be quite grumpy on a bad day, really dismissive. Then you've got blue people who are really organised, need all the detail in the world. And you've got yellow people who are really bubbly, don't want any detail, they'll be bored in a couple of seconds. And then you've got green people who are really caring and thinking about everybody and want to involve everybody. And you have all these different people with all these different personalities and it's about being aware of it and you know, supporting, making sure you don't tell a yellow loads of detail because they'll be bored with it. But making sure that somebody who's got a blue personality, making sure they get the right detail so that everybody is happy and everybody is able to work to their strengths and communicate to their strengths within the team environment. So it's quite detailed. So, let's move on to some questions from the floor. Anyone got any questions, any questions they want to ask? Yeah. <coughs> uh, to give you an edge, because you're, you're, you're both top of your, of your group, you know what I mean? To give you that edge, do you have to be careful what you take? Who tells you what supplements you can have? Be, because you've got supplements that's coming into you, right? You've got to have an edge, do you know what I mean? To get, to, to get where you are, you've got an edge. So you've got to be very careful with what you have because you, obviously you guys are getting tested on a regular basis. So who tells you what you can have and what so can you have? There's a program called, well, there's a lots of programs, but one of them is Global Drug, which basically you can type in the exact ingredients, i.e. what puritan. Puritan. <laughs> you can type it in and you can type in and it'll tell you whether it's allowed in your sport or it's not allowed in your sport. And it'll, so that's kind of your, your safe haven, I suppose. So there's kind of no excuse for people to be having problems with drugs in sport because you have all the information there. You have everything that you can find out whether it's allowed in your sport or not. You so. can't. So we both have like nutritionists and my nutritionist will say you can take these supplements, but at the end of the day, it's still my responsibility. I'm putting it into my body, so I have to go on Global Drone and make sure that and it, it comes down to things like lemon it, it, it's it's so many things out there that. I just would rather not take a lot of this stuff because I don't, I don't want to run the risk. But global drone is a really good safety opportunity for you to put in and make sure that whatever you're taking is safe and it should be batch tested. And it, it's not just um, for us that like people can go on there and type it in. So if any of you are thinking about taking any supplements to support your sport or to pass on to anybody, make sure you let them know about that as well. you have to have an element of fun okay it's a job and it's something that I do every day but it's yeah you have to have some form of fun I'm I get to ski as a job so it's pretty it's pretty great but obviously that has it up it's ups and downs I'm away from home a lot I'm that sounds as though I'm moaning or something but you can't ever have a full life if that makes sense you're constantly on the move you're constantly trying to train in different places and when you are home you're not really there you're just training and you're trying to get ready for the next event but um yeah i think i i definitely still love my sport but the fun yeah it's still fun i, I love winning so that has, <laughs> that has an element of fun but um yeah i think you have to have it yeah it's the same that you know like in all jobs that you do you have highs and you have lows you have stressful all the times you have times where you don't want to go to work and and that happens in sport as well, um, but I think you know the opportunities that we get our way for the negatives of it. Thank you. I've got a question. Um, <laughs> how do you deal? Obviously, you're you're you're, you're really well, a great success last year, but obviously you don't always win. So, kind of how do you deal with failure? I don't know if I've done world champs yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think 
how do you deal with failure? I suppose you have to see the bigger picture of failure always hurts, okay? So like when, when I went to the games, we went there wanting five gold medals. I came back with one. So that that for me was the first day was failure. We'd come last, we'd never come last in a race in our whole time of being there. And we didn't know how we were gonna come back. How do you say to yourself, I reckon I can win, I've just come last in the biggest stage of my, my whole career, but I'm gonna to win tomorrow. And I think, yeah, that was probably the hardest time to deal with that and then try and bring yourself up. But if you can, and you're able to, to realize why you do it, what you're there for, and if you put 100% into that training, then there's no reason why you shouldn't win. As long as we, our goal was we stand at the top and we say, we never miss a training session, we never miss that bike session. We were always last ones on the bike, we were always last ones training. So as long as you can sit there and say that, then yeah, you should win. I think karma then comes around, I think, and it ends up being your day at some point. It's just plugging along to get there in the end. I think it's like similar. Um, I've been to two World Cups and lost two, but it never makes you want to get off the horse. It just makes you want to stay on it and do better and improve and go on that step, one step further and, and actually do it. And I think it, in anything, whether it's failure, in losing, getting an injury, getting dropped, it's a cliche, but it completely does make you stronger and it makes you better for the next time round. When you come back from an injury or when you get reselected, you're always stronger and fitter, faster. They say it a lot in, in like adverts and stuff like that, but it is really true. Um, um, <laughs> sorry. As elite athletes and maybe some aspiring athletes in the room, where does the transition come from playing your local club or ski at the ski centre to having that drive to become elite in the field? Sorry, I'll ask the first question. Um, I think you have to you have to sacrifice, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. It's a choice in sport. Sport isn't forced. It's it's a choice, and for me. My choice was, yeah, go and party with my friends and have a great time or become a great athlete. And I think, yeah, the sacrifice can be big and it can. I sit there many, like the amount of times I sit there, what am I doing and why am I here and why am I training when my friends are having fun and I'm doing this? But really, there's, there's a bigger reason for it. And the reason is I've learned so many more skills from doing the sport I do. And whether I win or I don't win, I've still learned skills. I'm the shyest person you've ever met, really, and I'm now standing in front of people doing speeches. So I think it teaches you a lot of sport, and it, you can always gain stuff from sport, whether you're elite at it or you're just at club level. And I was club level for, for years, and okay, I've, I've transferred into a, a different path and a different route, but it's, it just shows there's different routes. You don't always have to, you get injured in your sport. I got injured and was like, this is the end of the world for me, like, what am I going to do? I went to university and I, I recovered and I got better, but I went into another path and this path was the disability path. But there's always there's always paths and I think you you should if you want it then you'll get it. It's just putting that dedication into it. Yeah, I think yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 um, I think the it's like similar in what um should say, but also I think Support network that you have around you enabling you to go on and go further. But if my family weren't involved in rugby as much as they were, and my dad wasn't as excited about me playing rugby, then I probably wouldn't have pressed, potentially pressed on as much as I did. And so it's, a lot of it is due, due down to my parents and my family that were close to me, encouraging me, and helping me to go along with, with what I wanted to do. And I think what really helped is that my mum played and my sister played, so I looked to them as role models and wanted to be like them, so it kept me on that path. And, and there was lots of opportunities out there for me to do that, so it wasn't it wasn't too difficult for me to get on that path because my family did it and they encouraged me and supported me into going into elite rugby. If you were Olympic or champions, what would you be? Obviously, we've got sports people here who are. Yeah, maybe. Not that elite, but where would you go if you were an elite? You were just a good sportsman. Where would you go? Coaching, teaching, lecturing. Yeah, I think one. It's a really difficult question to ask because you also get asked what you're going to do when you finish. Yeah. And it's really difficult because this is the. Yeah, it's the. 
this is, so if somebody wants to be a scientist, and they're being a scientist, I want to be a rugby player or something, and that's really difficult to have two careers that you want to do. And a lot of athletes, I think, find that out right near the end of their career, and you know, opportunities that the door opens. So, you know, I'm sure you've had lots of opportunities open since winning the gold, and same here, but so, there's avenues, there's businesses that talk to you, and, and there's lots of things out there that I've never experienced and never gone to, but actually, when I retire, a company may say, we want you to, want to give you some experience on the marketing, and I might go and try it out, and might find my feet there, yeah, but it, it's, I personally can't answer that question. Sorry, I thought you were going to say Ashwin or something. <laughs> 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 I think for me, I think, like I like said, that I'm, we've been really fortunate to be able to do new things, since, for me, since the Games, and I've, been, I've been part of the Medway mentoring group for young kids and getting them into sport and stuff and I think that's where I go down. I really enjoy, I enjoy watching people progress and I enjoy people passionate about something but it might not be skiing, not many people are, but it can be in anything and it all, it's all related. It doesn't matter what sport, we're standing in completely different sports but they all have things that are related to each other. Teamwork, commitment, everything is related so I think I'd still go down the sport avenue. I don't know, you'll see me 10 years doing something completely opposite, but I think the sport avenue is where I would go with the audience. What's been the worst moment in your career and how did you overcome that? For me, the downhill, so the day before we won this, it was, um, it, we, we thought we were going to win. I literally generally stood at the top and believed we were going to win. So when you get to the bottom and you've done the best run and you get to the bottom, you're like, yeah, that was sweet, that was good, I've, I've done well. And we got to the bottom and my partner said, not partner like that, just the speed partner. <laughs> she said to me, are you, what, where are we on the board? And I was like, we're not on the board. And she's like, what do you mean we're not on the board? And I'm like, we're not on it. And so we were last. And when it came out that we were last, we were just like, what on earth is happening? We'd gone from a sport that nobody really watched, no one really cared about, to having media lined up for, for miles. And you had to go to each one of them and say why you hadn't made the country proud that day. And I think for us, that was really tough to stand there and be like, it's okay, we've got four more races. Because you're already dealing with something that really hurts and you've, you've worked four years for, but you're then dealing with, oh yeah, people are watching this and thinking, I was like, oh, we've got to give. Do you know what I mean? So that was probably my hardest moment. But then it's picking yourself up, and I then made the best moment of my career. So it's it's choosing what you want out of life, and for us, it was to fight, and it worked. So it's it's that probably is my worst. I don't know. My injury was pretty bad for me. I didn't really enjoy that. Concussion's not much fun. But um, yeah, no, I think that's probably the, the toughest I've felt. Mine was probably losing at home in 2010 the World Cup final by three points. Um, yeah, it's pretty tough. Um, I think because I was first capped in 2006 and I was just a baby, um, I went to a World Cup and just sort of watched it all go by. And then in 2010, when I selected against the squad, it was like the biggest, the biggest thing that I felt I'd done. And for us to lose so closely at home was probably one of the most difficult times. And as Charlotte was saying, you then have to speak to media. But for me, the hardest part was walking across the pitch to my family and friends, to then have to stand in front of them and you know, cry on their shoulder that we'd just lost it and to say sorry to them. You know, Don't be stupid, but that's how you feel. You feel like you've let everybody down. And, but the only thing you can do is just get back out there and try and make them proud again. Last question to the back. We didn't really have any support um, <coughs> due to the sport being so low funded. Um, we had a psychologist that played a massive part in, in us getting to the games and winning the medal at the games. But since then, we've, we've regained funding for the team and we now have a physio that follows us around, sometimes a doctor, and the psychologist comes with us and then the main coach. So they're my three, three main people in my career, really, and they define whether I'm ready to ski or not. Really. Um, in our team, obviously there's quite a lot of us. <laughs> uh, we've got um, a team of uh, physios, uh, we've got three different physios and a doctor, we've got psychologists, 
um, a nutritionist and then our coaches. Um, we also have um, a lady who works with us with lifestyle, so planning your career after. She's got a work cut out for her. Um, but also looking into career options and things like that. Um, so yeah, we've got quite a big team around us. Um, the elite squad, there's 54 of us, so they've got quite a lot of people to get through. But it, they're so important. If you, if you don't have them, then the chances of winning and getting to your ultimate performance is, is quite far. Well, we'll just finish up. We'll just, I'd just like to um, ask a lot of last question. And that's what's, what's next? What's the next big goal for you guys? Obviously, you've, you've reached the pinnacle, so how are you going to get? Yeah, how are you going to do more there? Um, well, for me, um, in September, for the first time ever, uh, women's rugby went professional. So, um, and that's only 20 of us are contracted and we're really focusing on Rio 2016 and this year we're um, fighting for qualification for that. So that's the next goal. Uh, for me, as long as they don't back to support, it's World Champs on the 2nd of March, so it's a good place. And then I don't know what's next. No idea. <laughs> Really? Well, uh, thanks for asking the questions and thank you for answering them so honestly. Uh, so you put your appreciation together. For